Hello, welcome to my introduction to running SimAvio on three monitors with X-Plane. So the two bottom monitors will be running our touch screens running the avionics. The upper monitor will be the out the window view for X-Plane. As you can sort of see, that's the AMD radon control panel. The lower left monitor is the primary Windows monitor. The upper monitor is just another additional monitor. And the lower right monitor will be an extension of the avionics display. The top edges of the two bottom monitors are aligned both in real life, roughly, and as well as on the control panel. Bottom left monitor is an Acer T231H. The bottom right is a Mona Price 1280 by 1024 VGA monitor. The Acer is connected via an active display port to HDMI adapter. The VGA monitor is with a VGA to DVI that came in the video card box. And the upper monitor is via just a standard DVI cable. Eight, uh, AMD requires that for multiple, for more than two monitors, at least one must be on the display port, which is why that lower left monitor is on a display port to HDMI active adapter. So, after we get done setting up the monitors, we already have SimAvio installed, we have Xplane installed, we have the plugins installed. So, in just a minute here, we will get the actual display working and start up SimAvio to look at how that's done. So it's loading up. It takes a little while to load and I know that that's unreadable. It'll be a little more obvious here in just a second once it finishes loading. It will actually take a brief pause while it loads here. So, here's the SimAvio display, loaded up, uh, finishing up its interface tests. We'll be using one of the standard FTS 1000 panels as the starting point for our uh, display today. So we'll load that up in the usual fashion. We'll start with the uh, ATD panel because that's the one that already has the instruments and everything on it. Once again, not readable, but if you have the G1000 equipped SimAvio, you will have that already. So we will load that up, and there we go. So this is the default panel, you see. We're going to modify it slightly since we don't need that extra space up at the top for an out-the-window view. And we don't really need all the pretty enhancements. And we need to make it wider and do a few other changes to it. So we'll load up uh, the layout editor. which once again is pretty much unreadable. Sorry about that. <coughs> but anyway, that is the layout editor window. So the first thing we need to do is resize the display. We set the top of the display to zero, which is the top of the bottom monitor. We need to make it wider. In this case, we go to 3,200 pixels wide because that's the total width R2. And, we'll, and the bottom has been set to 1080, which is the height of the tallest of the two bottom monitors. So now we actually start moving the panel elements around so that we can actually utilize all that space we've just freed up. So, unfortunately, I, in theory, you can drag these around. I end up using the mouse. So, the other thing is, I find it's easier for resizing to go back to that layout panel on the left and tell it an actual size that you may want to use. So, we kind of generally adjust things before we resize them since we still have enough free space. You notice we've turned off the background, uh, we've turned off the compass uh, enclosure display. Now we'll go ahead and remove the 
few other items around. The ELT switch, just for looks. The switch panel. The flap lever. We've kind of tossed the uh, instruments aside there so that they're out of the way in a minute. So, but next we'll resize these. So on our particular monitor, 1.8 is about right. If you have two different pixel densities, you may need to make these different relative sizes so that they match up in the physical screen. These two monitors are roughly the same uh, number of pixels though, so, or pixel density. So 1.8 roughly works. Drag that around so that we can actually see all the displays and components. Move the instruments out of the way. Can resize those as well. Obviously every component can be resized and moved and even the aspect ratio has changed. Get the compass somewhere. That is just the compass there without the enclosure around it. Bump up the audio panel to match the size of the other ones. Move our little brakes indicator somewhere so we can actually see it. You can also obviously drag if you want to resize things instead of typing. Move our flap lever around. So this is kind of our general view. Now, the most important part is, of course, saving your creation. So get a nice name here, which you can't actually see. And then, of course, the actual other most important part was to switch that background so it wasn't purple anymore. So there's our color chooser for the background. Make it black. So there we have kind of the general the general view. And we will go put our panel away here so that we can load up X-Plane. Actually, we will load up our panel. This is one we've done previously. Notice the instruments are bigger, a few things are a little better optimized. Obviously, you know, however you want. Up top, we've unminimized X-Plane because it takes a really long time to load. We will make sure it's up there on that top monitor. Make sure it's highlighted. And with one key press, thanks to Auto Hotkey, it will actually be made full screen. We will actually, so there's, you can kind of see that that's the Auto Hotkey macro. We'll actually have a link off that link for this in the description for this video. So click on it. Press the magic keys. Remember what the magic keys are. In this case, it's actually Control Alt G. Not sure how it ended up with that. The other thing to note is when you set up your macro, the top of this upper monitor is actually negative the height because the bottom monitor's top is zero. So, so you need to set it to the width and height in the monitor, but a negative value if you want it if it's above your primary monitor. So there you have it. We have a lovely x -plane full screen out the window view, a lovely lower set of avionics, um, unpause X-Plane, let the horizon sync back up. And we are Good to go fly. You notice it pretty much looks a lot like a real G1000. Have an alternator warning there. Um, not sure what's causing that, honestly. So, something we need to look at probably. Just like the real G1000, except the out the window view is blinking on and off. Have a loose cable that we will be fixing after this video. And so, you know, can declutter just like the real thing. And there we have it.